Before we get started in setting up your swivel, let's talk about your recording environment. It's very important that you take a little bit of extra time to learn what makes a great video using a great product such as swivel. The first thing that we'll talk about is robot placement. So using either our floor stand or a tripod that you already have, make sure that you place that tripod or floor stand in the center of your room and then mount your swivel robot on top. And make sure it's nice and tight. You do not want the robot or your mobile device to fall. You'll also want to check your height. So if the robot is too low, your head may be cut off in the recording. And equally as important, you will want to adjust for height in case there are students in your classroom who do not consent to being filmed, you can ensure that they are omitted from the view. Place secondary markers around your classroom within three feet of any students whose audio you would like to collect. Now let's talk about the lanyard and the primary marker. So we have three markers here. Your kit may have only come with one or maybe three or five. This is the primary marker. You'll notice it has no color sticker. It should remain black so you can distinguish it from the other markers. These are secondary markers as indicated by color stickers. They should remain colored so you can keep them separate from the primary. You'll want to use our neck lanyard. This ensures that you're wearing the marker in the appropriate spot. I always like to describe this process of looping the lanyard string around the marker as if you're adhering a luggage tag to a piece of luggage. It's pretty simple. There's a small hole on the bottom of the marker and you just loop that string through. Now, wearing your marker in the appropriate location. There is a little adjusting clip on the lanyard itself, you want to pull that out so you can make enough space to get the lanyard around your neck. And then when you place lanyard around your neck, you want to adjust that clip in the back around your neck so that the marker is sitting squarely on your chest, very close to your voice. Now our model is also going to be pulling her zipper down just so there's no interference uh, from that zipper in the marker's microphone. Here's an example of where you should not wear your marker near your waist belt where the marker can't pick up your audio behind a necklace where it could have interference. Do not wear it with a fox in a box. Do not wear it here or there. Just follow our model and wear it squarely in the center of your chest. And here's just an example of tracking so the robot is looking for the marker that she's wearing and it's doing so via an infrared signal on the front of the robot. Now let's get started setting up your swivel. Swivel has three major components. The robot, which can connect up to four additional microphones for student audio. The swivel app, which can be downloaded on iOS or Android devices. And the swivel teams platform which you can access your stored videos and collaborate with your colleagues. First, logging into Swivel. You want to first download that Swivel app on either your iOS or Android device. Make sure you choose the one with the mint green S. Next, register using unique credentials to you. You want to ensure that you are using your email address that way, the videos go to your private library and that no one else has access. Use the same credentials on the platform, which is what is shown here. Now let's talk about unboxing your kit. First, we have your Swivel C-Series case, which contains your robot and all of its components. When you unpack, you'll find your Swivel C-Series base with the primary marker docked in it in the center. The primary marker tracks the robot captures audio, and controls the app and device. To charge it, simply place it in the base, making sure all of the metal pins are aligned. The number of markers you receive depends on which model you purchased. C3 kits just have two secondary markers, and C5 kits come with four. 
If you purchase the C5, you'll get two secondary markers that are already paired in the case and another two in a separate box. Use these colored stickers to differentiate between your secondary markers. You'll also receive a neck lanyard and clip for your primary marker, and then shorter wrist lanyards for your secondary markers. Shims are responsible for keeping your mobile device secure in the robot grip. All kits come with three standard shims, one of which will already be in the base, and two additional ones. To switch shims, push the grip all the way to the left and replace the shim inside with one that best fits your device. Then slide the grip back into the base, pushing all the way to the right. Next is power and charging. This is the Swivel Robot's base charging cable. You'll also receive the four-port USB charging block, which allows you to charge everything at once. And if you're using Swivel internationally, we also provide compatible adapters. Finally, the secondary markers can be charged using this cable. You'll receive two if you have a C5 kit. The last components are the cables that are required to connect your swivel to your mobile device. Use the lightning cable for iOS and the micro USB cable for Android. If you have a newer Android device, you may need the Type-C adapter, which we sell on our store. Not all Android devices are compatible, so check our Android compatibility article on swivel.com setup. Our floor stand is an optional accessory, and if you haven't purchased one of ours, we highly recommend acquiring one of your own. Another optional accessory is the Swivel Expand Lens Mini, which clips to your mobile device and provides a wide-angle view, which is perfect for multi-camera in the classroom. Finally, you have your trusty Swivel C-Series case, which will include our quick start guide. Now we're going to connect and turn on the robot. First, choose the appropriate cable for the mobile device that you'll be using and connect the micro USB end in the back of the robot. In this example, we'll be using an iPad. So we have the lightning cable connected to the robot. Connect the cord to your iPad and turn on the robot by pressing and holding the power button on the front. Take the primary marker out and press and hold the power button on it to turn it on. Here's what it looks like from the front of the robot. Press and hold the power button. And if you are watching the top right hand corner, we are showing you what this process looks like in the robot section of the Swivel app. Once the robot detects the mobile device, it will ask you to connect your primary marker. Once the primary marker is detected, it will appear in the app. And as other markers join your session, they will also appear next to the primary marker in the app. And once all of the markers are connected, you can go ahead and resume tracking by pressing the center button on your primary marker and you'll be ready to go. But before we do, we wanna take a quick detour in case you do need to pair two additional markers. If you have a C5 kit, this will be necessary when you first get started. So we are just gonna go through turning on the markers again, just so you understand what happens in the app when the markers turn on and how they appear in your session, just so you ensure that everything is turned on and ready to go. And right here, we're demonstrating that center button action. It's what pauses the tracking so you can focus on what's going on. Press and hold the power button on each additional marker. Again, these were pre-paired, so the orange marker and the purple marker are already showing up in our app. When they illuminate, they are ready and paired. Now, to pair a secondary marker that has never been used in the system, turn it on 
and dock it in the back and make sure that the pins align with the pins in the robot base. You will see an indication in your app that the marker is pairing. And once it's finished, simply take it out of the dock and turn it back on because docking the marker does turn it off. Next, the app will prompt you to choose a color. We'll make this one red. And we also provide more stickers so you can apply the matching color to the front of your marker. Okay, we made it. Recording and uploading time. So I'm just going to show you an example video here in my little swivel classroom. So first I'm going to press record from the marker. You can also do this on the capture screen, but we recommend using the marker because you can be up to 30 feet away when you do this. I'm going through my lesson, tracking, and now I'm ready to end my recording. So the first thing that I can choose to do here is I can trim my video, but I'll just go ahead and do that in the web later. Next, I'm going to give my video a title, and we definitely recommend you do this at this stage instead of waiting for it to upload, because you can put the date there and you'll remember exactly what this content was about. Next, if your settings have automatic upload enabled, then your video will begin uploading just like mine is because we have a strong Wi-Fi connection. From here, you can just tap the share button and share directly to one of your sharing groups on web. And then you will notice that once your video is safely and securely stored in web, that the icon on your screen will change to swivel with the blue web icon. These are the recommended app settings. Auto upload ensures that your video gets automatically uploaded when it's completed to our FERPA compliant platform. Storage Saver ensures that the video is completely removed from your device to save on storage and protect your privacy. And these are a few recommended capture screen action bar items. The screencast function, multi-camera, swivel live through Zoom, and presentation slides. Next, we'll access our video on the Swivel Teams platform. And again, ensure that you're logging in with the exact same credential that you used for the Swivel app. First, you will have a user dashboard, which will have all of your recent activities, your uploads, shares, comments, and videos that you have viewed. You will have a private viewing library where nothing is shared unless you deliberately decide to share something. So just like we did in the app, all you need to do is press share when you're ready and the sharing options that you have will be presented. Once your video is shared, you can go into the group section if that's where your video was shared to and access that video. Anybody who is part of this group will also have access and they will be able to watch and leave comments for you. Commenting couldn't be easier. As you're playing your video, once you click into the comment box, it will pause the video at that timestamp. You can leave your comment, and if your team has rubrics, you can select a standard that ties into your comment. And then the video will continue playing. You can also reply to other people's comments. Additionally, if you're not ready to collaborate, you can use private notes. You can also perform some basic editing, like adding presentation slides or performing a trim. You can trim from the front and the back of a video. This saves it as a new project, so you save both projects. 
And if you have Pro, you can even stitch these clips back together and make a highlight reel. Other great Pro features include multi-marker bookmarking, which allow you to use any of the markers to timestamp the video while it's being recorded, screencasting, so you can actually screencast your laptop or desktop while you're recording, sharing to groups, which we already mentioned, and multi-camera for setting up other mobile devices or even Chromebooks around a classroom to get views of your students. And here's how to contact us. Email us at support at sobel.com or call us Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You can access our knowledge base at swivel.com slash setup 24-7. And if we have piqued your interest about building a swivel team of your own, please reach out to us at sales at swivel.com. Happy swiveling!